Tonight, key plans unveiled for improving the health of Flinders and Upper North locals. And COVID-19 vaccines all ready to be administered in Broken Hill. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. Key framework in consumer and community health has today been released by the Flinders and Upper North Local Health Network. CEO Craig Packard says it will help deliver better patient outcomes across the region. It's a new plan to deliver patient-centred care. It's our roadmap to how we're better going to engage our consumers and allowing them to provide uh, input into their own care. The Flinders and Upper North Local Health Network today releasing new framework for consumer and community health. Focused on delivering better patient outcomes with two major priority areas, individualised patient care and partnering with consumers for planning and and governance of health services. And we know that if those two priorities are being met in an organisation, a health organisation, that the health outcomes for the people using those services is safer and of a higher quality. Months of community consultation helping shape the three-year strategy, aiming to provide high quality health care to more than 44,000 people across the region. We know that you know, having the importance of consumers being at the forefront um, improves health outcomes in the end. Also saying it's a significant milestone for the local health network. This approach is permeating all the way through our organisation and it's one of the board's most important pieces of work. More information can be found online. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Exactly one month after the first COVID-19 vaccinations landed in Australia, Healthcare workers in Broken Hill will roll up their sleeves. A date finally set for the rollout across the far west. Our reporter Lachlan Itter has the details. The 22nd of March, that's when the first COVID-19 vaccinations will be administered here at Broken Hill Health Service. CEO of Far West Local Health today announcing the district has the capacity to give the vaccine to at least 900 people a week. Frontline health workers the first to get the jab. We're also going to uh, be uh, vaccinating the correctional staff as well as some of our partner organisations such as um, Camilla Health and um, RFDS. Our capacity high enough that it'll allow phase 1B to begin around the same time. That group including emergency services and other workers in healthcare facilities. As for when the broader community will get its chance. We're still uh, waiting on the Commonwealth um, GP footprint in terms of who may be able to provide those services. Everyone in the far west will receive the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is easier to store and has a longer refrigeration life. Two doses are needed, given 12 weeks apart. It's expected the initial phase of the rollout will take just two to three weeks to complete. Meanwhile, South Australians are being warned to brace for an onslaught of COVID scams as the vaccination rollout continues. Already this year, tens of millions of dollars has been lost to overseas syndicates. Targeting you when you're most vulnerable. We're talking millions within attack crews and then it rolls up to billions. Cybercrime is a top dollar business and experts warn is on the rise with syndicates taking advantage of the vaccine rollout. What you are going to see is emails uh, potentially looking to tell you where to go to get the vaccine and uh, they'll be fake. He says they're already seeing a spike in online scams overseas. What the attackers are trying to do is essentially steal credit card information, and steal personal information and particularly health information. With advances in technology making it more and more difficult to distinguish what's real and what's fake. Don't click on the links from within emails go straight to the Department of Health or to whatever the organization's website is directly from your web browser. Already this year, more than $15 million has been lost to scams in New South Wales and South Australia combined. The attackers are certainly taking advantage. For more information, visit the Scamwatch website. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Police have revealed items belonging to alleged murder victim Jasmine Cower have been found near Hawker. Detectives confirming a member of the public alerted police to items located in a bin at the Kenyaka Historical Ruins. Searchers also uncovered Jasmine's shoes and ID tags. The 21-year-old's cream handbag and a plate and knife are still outstanding. 
Anyone with dash cam footage or any information that may assist with the investigation is being urged to contact authorities. Police are calling for public information on a stolen boat and trailer north of Cooper PD. Between 4 and 5 p.m. on January 12, a blue and white vessel with registration AOJ17Q and grey trailer were believed to be stolen on the Stewart Highway. Meanwhile, York Mid-North Police are calling on the community to help locate two stolen motorbikes. Police say these two bikes were stolen from a property 20 kilometres northeast of Peterborough on Monday. Anyone with information is being urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Still to come tonight, the Education Union reaches out to teachers for better student outcomes. And final preparations underway for the St Pat's race. Welcome back. South Australia's Education Union has been visiting parts of the Upper Spencer Gulf this week, speaking with multiple school principals and teachers. The tour, in a bid to better understand the needs of educators and students out in rural areas. Reflecting on their school visits, these Education Union members, speaking with Air Peninsula principals, teachers and parents in person this week. We're talking to members about the improvements they want to see in the system so that students get the support they need when they need it. Visiting schools across Cow, Cleve and Wyala, Ms Golding says student support for those with learning difficulties is a common concern. We've heard that some students are waiting two years to get an initial assessment before the teacher can even apply for additional funding. In a statement, South Australia's Education Minister John Gardner says there is no wait list as such regarding support. If a child has been identified, then they will get support. Also saying schools have access to funding while students are being assessed. What we want to see is significant extra funding put in place and more professionals like speech pathologists and psychologists just available here in the regional areas. Mr Gardner also saying the educational psychologist assessment times have been reduced over the past two years and the state government is aiming to reduce them further. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. South Australia's opposition leader Peter Melanakis made the trip to Wyala today speaking with GFG Alliance officials and local workers at the Steelworks. The state Labor leader says the government needs to invest more in the city. There is no option here for the Steelworks closing down. We have to make sure that everything is done to permit its long-term survival. We're all concerned, but it, everything that we've been told is uh, it's business as usual. We do know that we're in a far better position than when we went into administration, that the uh, operations here in Australia are profitable. Mr Malinakis also saying he's advocating for the Steelworks' next capital investment. Final preparations for tomorrow's St Pat's race are wrapping up, ahead of Broken Hill's biggest event in 12 months. Demand from interstate visitors have been so strong, tickets will remain on sale until tomorrow morning. Racing to set up before the race is run. A hive of activity today as the finishing touches are completed for the St Pat's races. We're here to ensure the safety of our patrons. They come here, they have a safe day, they have a good day, they enjoy themselves. And with little chance of borders closing, there's a last minute rush of interstate travellers. So Saturday morning between 9 and 12, we'll open our office on Argent Street, the main street, People can buy a ticket there. Remembering no tickets will be available at the gate. The Silverton Hotel also prepping for recovery day. We've been taking bookings uh, and I would advise anybody if they're going to come, do that so that we, we don't want to disappoint anybody coming out here and they can't get in. While police will be stepping up patrols and RBTs throughout the weekend. Please have a plan, don't drink and drive, um, don't cause disturbance to other people and, and you really won't have an issue in town. But if everybody follows the rules, there's nothing that can rain on this parade. We're going to have a crowded house day tomorrow, four seasons in one day, but we've had that before and we'll just soldier on and keep going. Lachlan Uta, 7 Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, the Port Augusta Racing Club has received a much needed facelift as it prepares to gear up for this year's racing season. Club members say they're excited to offer something bigger and better to patrons following a COVID-19 break. All hands on deck at the Port Augusta Racing Club. After a tough COVID year, the group is gearing up for the return of the 2021 racing season. 
and it's great to have these volunteers and committee members that put in so much to our uh, community club and uh, hopefully a lot of those uh, improvements will be shown to the public at our first race meeting on uh, early in April. The makeover offering a new ticket box to seating areas for patrons. There is plenty for everyone to enjoy. A uh, terraced area of paving um, and also uh, uh, seating areas for, for people. Um, that has developed over the last couple of years and it's sort of completed now. Their main boast at the moment is their lawn in front of the course. We've uh, put in a $14,000 sprinkler system and uh, that has rejuvenated the front of the area. Also ensuring a safe environment. Installing a defibrillator which has certainly, uh, to my knowledge, helped numerous people um, in certain situations. Locals and visitors are encouraged to check out the upgrades this racing season. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Boats prepare to hit the water for a popular Port Lincoln event and a powerful Port Pirie film selected for the Adelaide Fringe. Hello again. Dozens of boats in Port Lincoln will hit the water this weekend for the annual Tuna Classic. Some rough weather forcing the event to postpone by a day, but organisers say they won't let that rain on their parade. A spectacular sight as more than a dozen ships prepare to take to the sea. It really showcases Port Lincoln, what we've got to offer as far as fishing, as far as uh, the beautiful beaches. Anglers gearing up for this year's Riviera Tuna Classic, set to get underway this Sunday. It's hard work, but it's a great event. More than 30 boats were scheduled to compete, but forecasted rough weather for some to drop out. We've had to postpone the event for a day, so we've pushed the dates forward to uh, Sunday and Monday's fishing events now, rather than Saturday, Sunday. The flagship event attracting boats from across South Australia. With 17 different categories, there's something for everyone. Get out there, put the rods in the water, just give it a go. Anyone can uh, win the major prize. Organisers say the event is a huge coup for the local economy, with accommodation being booked out and tackle stores run off their feet. Really important for the city, the locals really get behind it all. Um, Russell and Gabriella do a great job. This year the fish are a bit sketchy all over the place, so anyone's guess, it's got to be lucky, luck on the day. Last year's winning tuna weighed in at 15.8 kilograms, the weight to beat. After the year we've had with the pandemic, you know, it's good to get back here and get out there and get into it. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. The New South Wales Water Minister has confirmed the controversial Menindee Water Savings Project has been scrapped. A spokesperson saying the 2024 project deadline was unrealistic and it didn't have broad community support. I've asked the Minister to fund an independent, competent person to come out and pull together the views of the community and present that as a coherent plan that we can take to the Minister. The Department of Planning, Industry and Environment says it's focusing on other issues around water reliability and quality and will continue to work with the community on future plans. Port Augusta's east side foreshore is getting some much needed TLC, with City Council rolling out a turf recovery project over the next few weeks. It's hoped the works will help brighten up the foreshore, attracting visitors to stay. At the moment we're just trying to get it to regenerate um, through watering it a bit extra, um, along with the subsurface irrigation. Some areas have been flagged off to allow for the turf to grow, with public access not permitted. A new Port Pirie short film has been selected for the Adelaide Fringe, a powerful piece staged in the southern Flinders Ranges. The local artist says the piece focuses on bringing inner peace to the community. Homecoming Dance for Peace, a breathtaking new short film. In all her beauty. Captured on the land of the Nukunu people. The film is a short five minute piece of me dancing in the beautiful landscape of the Southern Flinders Ranges and I do this to bring peace, inner peace to my community. Maria Savant working hand in hand with mentor and filmmaker Kim Maframatis. He says there were lots of different film elements to create this masterpiece. Out in the environment you had the weather to deal with, you had the sun to deal with, so you had to think about a lot of things. So we scripted it, it took a long time to script the film. Now selected for the Adelaide Fringe, the duo is thrilled to share the piece, saying it's a win for regional artists. It's screening now, um, the Iris Cinema on the weekend and the Duke of Brunswick in the city throughout the week, so we're very excited. It's a piece of art, there's no doubt about that. It's spiritual, um, the environment's beautiful. 
There's more to come with Maria busy working on her next venture. What will come after this is a stage show that I have written that will be launched here in the Northern Festival Centre in October. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Our cricket experts will join us with their tips for the weekend. And we'll have the weather details with Meg Sides. Welcome back. It's grand final week for many cricket clubs across the region with Wyala teams gearing up for the final game. Central and North Wyala going head to head this weekend, competing for the 2021 Winners' Cup. Swinging into this year's grand final, North Wyala taking on last year's champions, Centrals. A bit more confident than we have the last few years. Um, a few things go in our favour, a few changes in the side which helps us going forward, so hopefully we'll be a bit stronger this year. Both teams undergoing one last training session before taking to the field this weekend. North eager for the win, coming in strong with a game plan. Wickets early. If we can get a few wickets early, get into their middle order, hopefully that'll give us the best chance, I reckon. Central is currently holding the title, also coming into the game with a strategy. We've had a bit of experience with playing in grand finals. You know, we go in with a fairly clear game plan. Both teams bringing some star players to watch out for. Ryan Parker's come in the last few weeks and made us look really good. Uh, Lockie Combs has been really good all year and the usual usual big dogs around the place like David Atkinson and Matt Quist. Josh Ackland, Brad Smith and Jared Dunbar will do um, a lot of the work with the bat. Uh, with the ball, Daniel Collison, um, Brad Smith again. The captains encouraging locals to come and watch the clash at Memorial Oval this Saturday. Some of our bigger players definitely enjoy having the crowd around. It makes them go that extra gear up. And the last time we played against Norse, it was a two-run game, so only two runs of difference. Um, it's going to be tight, it's going to be close. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. And on that note, it's that time of the week again. Here are our cricket experts with their weekend tips. G'day and welcome to this week's round of cricket tips uh, for Port Augusta. Corn have advanced straight in the grand final last week at the expense of Central Sterling. Just means Central Sterling have to front up again this week and play a South Augusta in a prelim slash elimination final. I'm going to go towards Central Sterling to win this. I mean, clearly they've been the best team all year, but um, just had a bit of a slip up last week. I reckon they'll account for South Augusta this weekend. So that's my, that's my winner, uh, Central Sterling to beat South Augusta. Welcome to this week's Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. It's finals time here in Port Lincoln. We've got two huge games of cricket here at Centenary Oval, Saturday and Sunday. The first game sees Southern Air take on Charlton. Southern Air just got over the line against Tasman's last week. Well, Charlton had a huge win. Going to tip uh, a full-strength Charlton to get the job done and progress through the grand final. In the next game on Sunday is Tasman's versus Waybacks. Been a couple good games throughout the year and a couple of big results for Tasman's. Going to tip Tasman's to get over the line in this one and take on uh, the loser of the Saturday game. All in all, a big weekend of cricket here in Port Lincoln. Thanks for listening to Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. Hello and welcome to the grand final edition of Port Piri Cricket. Well, we're finally here and we've got Southport taking on Wandera. When these two met in the first final, it was Southport getting up in the last ball in an absolute thriller. We can only hope this game's as good as that one. If the last two weeks have told us anything, it's runs on the board that count, with both teams batting first, getting over the line. I'd love to tip Southport, but Wandera just seemed to find a way to win these games, so I'm tipping Wandera. Hello and welcome to the grand final of Wyala Cricket. In this week, we see Central Wyala take on North Wyala. Last week, we saw North Wyala smash the ruse by 90 runs, and they're taking on Centrals, who have been the benchmark all season. I'm going to tip a close one here, but I think I'm going to go with Central Wyala with their form in grand finals, with Collison and Smith leading the way. I think Coombs and Miller and Quist are going to have something to say about it though. Let's take a look now at what's happening in the weather. Here's Meg Sides. Thanks Ruby. Conditions were hot and sunny throughout the region today. From 3pm, Wyla registered a maximum of 35 degrees. Port Pirie reached a top of 33 and Woodna 36. Looking across the rest of the region now, Cooper Pedy had today's top temperature of 39. Port Augusta was a very warm 36. It was 35 degrees in Port Lincoln and Kadena 34. The satellite image shows cloud over the far north and west of South Australia with a trough producing showers and storms. High jet stream cloud over the south is not producing any rain. Skies are largely clear elsewhere under a high pressure ridge and a dry air mass. On the Gulf waters tomorrow, northerly winds between 10 and 15 knots, turning east to northeasterly in the afternoon. Seas and swells will peak below one metre. 
Mild changes on the way tomorrow. Port Lincoln mainly fine and 21. Some morning rain for Cleve and Woodna with tops of 19 and 22 respectively. Wyala will have rain and 24 degrees. Port Augusta similar conditions and a high of 25. Morning rain and 23 in Kadena. Rain in Port Pirie and Clare with maximums of 24 and 21 degrees. And Broken Hill can expect some late rain in the day with a top of 33 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now and temperatures will remain mild on Sunday with conditions clearing across the region. Cooper Pedy sunny and 24, Port Augusta and Broken Hill will be windy and 21, tops of 21 also for Kadena and Woodna and 20 for Port Lincoln. Monday will be generally sunny throughout the region, 26 in Cooper Pedy, tops of 23 for Broken Hill, Port Augusta, Woodna and Kadena, Port Pirie 24 degrees, 22 in Wyala and Port Lincoln. Temperatures will gradually warm up again by Tuesday, 28 for Cooper Pedy, Port Augusta 27, Broken Hill and Port Perry will be 26 and 25 in Woodna and Kadena. And that's all the weather from me tonight. Back to you, Ruby. Lovely. Thanks for that, Meg. And that's the local news this Friday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening and have a lovely weekend. Good night.